Good morning. Hi, everybody. I've been doing a lot of paint pouring during the pandemic and have gotten so fond of it that I haven't even been painting with pastels. Mm. I promised myself after this week I'm going to do some pastels again, though. <laughs> paint pouring has really gotten popular in the last couple of years. I don't remember how I became aware of it. Probably one of my granddaughters told me about it. Um, but I looked into the history of it a little bit. There was a muralist in Mexico named David Alfaro Sequeros, who in the 1930s started doing what he called accidental painting. And he combined many different kinds of paint and various methods of putting it onto surfaces and he did it on walls and floors and, and ginormous canvases. And then in this country, a mural, a, a abstract expressionist painter named Paul Jenkins in the 1950s started pouring paint into big containers and splashing it onto big surfaces. He sometimes, I'm gonna be using, you know, divide, the biggest container I'm using tonight is a 16 ounce cup. He would sometimes use trash cans and layer paint in it and throw it onto giant canvases and other things. So um, it's changed quite a bit since then. I'm gonna go over a little bit about what the supplies are that you would need to do it if you wanted to try it at home and then get into how I mix my paints because mixing them and getting them to the right consistency is, is very key in getting your paintings to do what you want them to. Um, I try not to use too many paper towels. Paper towels are good. I use a lot of rags, I get them wet and I can get a couple of days out of a rag even if I get a lot of paint on it. And then when it just gets too stiff to use anymore, I throw it away. So acrylic paint when it's dried on a surface can be thrown away a lot more safely. You can't pour it down a sink or on the ground or into the sewer in any way. Um, you need a waterproof surface to work on. This is a table in my basement that I have up nice and high so it doesn't hurt my back. And I've got three mil plastic on it right now. I bought a big sheet of it. It's similar to what plastic drop cloths and things are. Um, it's slick enough that I can wipe most of the paint off of it that I get on. And my work surface gets pretty messy in day-to-day -day use. Oh, shoot. Peg, somehow I muted you by accident. Get on mute. Okay. Sorry. So... You can use freezer paper, puppy pads, newspaper. People have gotten creative and use a lot of different things under their workspace. I hate tipping the canvas and having all the runoff go onto a surface and then get thrown away. I can save it. For instance, one of the paintings I did last night had a lot of runoff paint and I've got a good six ounces in here of paint that I can use again if I put it underneath under paint on a, on a canvas. Um, or I use it on the Kindness Rocks project and do rocks that I have set up on a cookie sheet so that I'm not wasting the paint. You don't really need eye protection unless you're gonna be splashing the paint around. I don't do any of the techniques that involve splashing of paint especially, so I don't need to wear goggles over my glasses. Um, there isn't any respiratory absorption with acrylic paint, so that's not a problem. Um, I wear gloves when I use them most of the time, just because it, it dries my skin. So I try to <clears throat> wear gloves so that I can not absorb the stuff that dries my skin. You need an assortment of sizes of cups. I've got four ounce, six ounce, and then up to 16 ounce. Um, the single use plastic cups, I use many, many times before I throw them away. After I've used them, I let the acrylic paint dry in it 
And then once it's good and dry, I can use other colors in it and it won't mix, mix with it. And then I get a lot of use out of the cups. The small cups that I found this week are paper, so I can throw those away a little less plastic in the trash. Um, you need craft sticks. People call them popsicle sticks, but craft sticks, the big ones, are best for stirring the paint. Um, you need something on to protect your clothes or wear painting clothes. I've got, I often do this in my pajamas, but I have <laughs> my, one of my nursing smocks on to cover my clothes so I don't get paint. And as you can see, I've got paint all over it. So it was wise that I wore it many times. Uh, you need a surface to work on, uh, to put the paint on to. And I usually use stretch canvases, but you can do it on ceramic dishes. You can do it on ceramic tiles. You can do it on rocks, as I said, and I've even done it on some seashells. But stretch canvas is what I use, and I really like the gallery wrap canvas with a, a deep side because I like to let the design flow over and cover the sides too. I think it looks nice. Um, I put big push pins on the back side of my canvases so that when I'm handling them and setting them onto the surface, they're raised up on this off the surface. These are the medium sized cushions. I have some even bigger ones that I use on the really big canvases. And you need your work surface to be pretty level, but what you really need to have level is your drying area. If you don't put a, your painting on a dry area, I mean on a level area while it's drying, it will tip the paint off and you'll come back to a very sad situation. This is one of my little levels that I use so that I make sure I've got a level space for them drying. You need some kind of a heating tool to get air bubbles out. If you don't get the air bubbles out of your paint, when it dries, it leaves a little crater in your paint. Um, and some of the techniques that we use, I'm looking at the cat causing mischief over there. Um, heating them lets the, breaks the surface tension of the top layer of paint and lets the other colors show through and, and make designs that people like. And I also have a hair dryer that has a complete cold setting and a couple of speeds. And that's good for blowing paint around on the surface. Sometimes I want to blow paint around for some of the techniques. Some people, a lot of people for a heat source use the little butane lighters that people use in kitchens and cooking and stuff, but I have trouble handling them. That heat gun that's electric works much better for me. Um, the acrylic paints that you can use, if you're starting out, you don't want to spend a lot of money. The craft paints at the craft store, the inexpensive ones work pretty well. They don't have as much pigment in them as some of the better paints, so you don't use as much of the pouring medium. What The pouring mediums are a variety of recipes, and I'll show you the two that I prefer, but um, PM or pouring medium is what you add to the acrylic paint to make it do what you want. Um, the medium priced and a little bit more expensive and the golden paints, of course, the most expensive, have a lot more pigment in them, so you use less of them. You can use more pouring medium and less paint. So even though the paints are more expensive, it's not as expensive as you would think. Um, the two pouring mediums that are the easiest to get a hold of and the least expensive are Elmer's Glue All. Not Elmer's School Glue that has more water in it, but Elmer's Glue All, which is PVA glue, polyvinyl acetate. It's a stretchy, rubbery consistency and that helps with doing this kind of painting or you can use flood flow trawl which is much less expensive both of these in gallon size are $15 a gallon so it's a lot less expensive than buying small containers um, 
The Floetrol is what's used to condition acrylic paints that are being applied with a paint sprayer. So people that are spraying their house and house walls and outside of their house and stuff use this. But it makes a great pouring medium for doing this kind of art. And this is the one that I prefer. You do have to strain it. Um, sometimes it's just the crusty bits that dry under the cap that get into it. But sometimes it's got stringy stuff in it. And it's something you don't want on your surface when it dries. It makes a lump on your painting. So I just use a, a strainer like this. And earlier today, I strained the amount that I'm going to use to mix some paint tonight to show you the mixing process. Can you so, show this? Can you show us, you know, what you're talking about? We we don't see any of these products, Peg. Can you show us? Hold them up. Isn't that screen available, Pam, to everybody? That screen got available. You should. Yes, there is. There is a second screen. You should pin the screen that says Margaret's iPad, that's the one that shows her, what her hands are doing down below. I see it. Okay. Yeah, if you, if you pin that screen, then you should be able to see it. And Peg, if you want to tip your, your iPad a little bit, because right now we're getting a lot of your belly and not a lot of the work. Oh, there we go. That's great. That's better. That's better. Perfect. Good. I had it set up perfect, but I have to keep taking it down on that Rexit. So this yeah. is the flood flow trawl. Can you see, Gail? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I, I, and then I'm, the Elmer's glue is the Elmer's glue all and not just school glue. School glue that has more water in it doesn't work as well. Okay. Uh, too much water doesn't let the acrylic paint do what you want. So into my cup, I used my strainer and I measured four ounces of the flow trial. And then I added one ounce of this golden product called GAC 800. And it's a pouring medium, but the real benefit of adding some of it to the paints is when your paint dries on the surface, it doesn't crack as it dries. Sometimes even if you've poured off enough paint that it's a nice thin layer, it can crack or craze when it's drying. And then that's usually a look that people don't like. So um, adding some GAC 800 to it keeps that from happening. And the ratio with the kind of paint that I'm using tonight is four ounces of Floetrol, one ounce of the GAC 800, and I'm gonna add two ounces and I'm gonna mix this color. Um, this is one of the Arteza colors that I really like. It's called Pearl Tangerine Orange. So I need to squirt. And I lined the side of my cup so I know where I have to fill it to. I don't measure that accurately anymore when I'm doing them on my own. Um, and a lot of the YouTube artists that I'll tell you about later have fabulous videos on their recipes, on how they measure and how they do this. But this neat cup that I found at Walmart for 99 cents has more measurements on it than you could use in a lifetime. <laughs> so that's helpful. And I've got a giant plastic measuring cup for food that I sometimes use if I need to measure large quantities of things. So I'm going to squirt my paint in up to my next line that I put on the side of my cup. And I find it's much better to put the pouring medium stuff in the cup first and then the paint. If you put the paint in first, it sticks to the cup and it takes a long time to stir it and get it to mix in. And when you first mix it in, it looks like it's going to be a diluted color but it's not when it dries it dries a lot darker than it looks when it's wet and it gets you the color that you want and then most people if they're going to do a painting mix their paints ahead of time because as you can see on the surface of this even though i'm just stirring it not whipping it i'm still getting some air bubbles in it um and mixing it back and forth with the wide stick against the side of the cup and scraping it really gets the paint mixed in. I can see on the side of my cup that I've still got liquids that aren't combined here. And I'll, after I get this mixed and let it sit for a few minutes, I'll use it in one of the paintings that I'm going to do. 
my choice of colors is usually my blues and greens that I like so much. But I do use the color wheel and pay attention, and sometimes I use complementary colors. And if you have your paints nice and thick, they don't make mud. They stay separate when you put them on the canvas. I'm going to try to show you the thickness of this. This is the part that is crucial. You want your paints to be a certain thickness for most of the different kinds of techniques that I use. I like them pretty thick. And when I lift up my cup and drip the paint in, it makes a little bit of a mound on the surface of the paint before it sinks in. And if it's thicker, it makes what they call a mound on a mound before it sinks in. If you've got paint that just absolutely goes straight in and doesn't make a mound at all, then that's very thin. And for some things you need it that thin, but for the most part you don't. The paint that I just used is fairly thick, and the Floetrol pouring medium is, a, is reasonably thick. So I don't need to add any water to this to thin it, and I don't need to add anything to thicken it. If for some reason it's not quite thick enough, I can add a little bit of the glue all to it, and it will thicken it up for me. And sometimes just letting it sit overnight, it thickens up. If I have them in these cups... I cover them with plastic if I'm going to leave them for a day or two. But this is what I put most of my paints in. I've got all these squirt bottles. Some of them are condiment bottles. A lot of them have measurements on the side, so that makes it easier to know how much stuff you're mixing together. So I don't add other things. There are lots of artists that like to have what they call cells pop up in their painting which is the color from underneath popping up and making pretty circles all over the painting. Um, and using silicone, adding silicone to your paint is one of the things that you can help make that process work. Uh, this is technically treadmill belt lubricant, but it's silicone. And I bought this a year ago and I've barely used any of it. It's a tiny amount that works. Um, there are a lot of hair products that have dimethicone in them, and people use those products sometimes if they don't have silicone. They add a little bit to their paints. Diane, um, did you have a question? Mm -hmm. I, see, I see you waving there, Diane. Did you have a question? You're muted. No, I think I made a mistake. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind. And there's different recipes for how much of the pouring medium with the Elmer's glue wall, depending on what kind of paint you've got, you either add one part pouring medium, one part paint, or one part pouring medium and two parts paint. Um, the Floetrol with the Arteza paints and the other paints that I use have enough pigment. I usually can get away with sometimes five parts Floetrol and one part paint. Um, and I often will do a little 8x8 eight eight canvas to test out my colors before I do it on a bigger canvas. And you can do, here's my little thing. Here it is. If you want to try it out, you can use mixed media paper works really well if you want to try paint pouring on that. Or even watercolor paper that's um, one of the thicker ones. Canvas boards work, but I find they warp a little bit, so I usually use a stretch canvas. Um, there's lots of recipes different people have for how to determine how much paint you need on a canvas. But basically, you get the square inches and divide it by 25, and that gives you an approximation of how much paint you need to cover the canvas. canvas. Uh, let's see... All right, I'm going to start pouring some paint and show you how much fun it is. These little canvases fit really nice into these disposable pizza pans. And that's a nice and expensive way to go if you don't want to have a great big fancy setup like this. If you're using small canvases, um, and one of the ones I have tonight I'll show you is on a... It's a little tray that's plastic for, it's called a finger paint tray, but it's only $7 and it's a, it's a little bit bigger than the round pizza pan. 
The paints that I have ready for this have a little bit of silicone in them. And I'm going to combine them and show you what happens when you do what's called a flip cup. They've all got a little bit of silicone. And I'm going to combine them in the cup and then I'm going to flip it onto my canvas and show you how I manipulate it and get my design. When I did this last night for Hannah's Art Club, I commented afterwards that I didn't know if they enjoyed it because they were so quiet. She said, they're always quiet. She says, I teach to, to silence all the time. So welcome to remote learning. All right, so this is eight by eight. I want to cover the sides too, so it's more like nine by nine. And I want... about four ounces of paint. The first color I'm putting in is this fabulous metallic paint that's called emerald. And in some techniques, you don't want the paints to mix together in the cup, but for this, I do want them to mix together. And all you have to do to get that to happen is pour it into the cup from higher. So you'll see that this is going to not just stay on top, it's going to combine with the paint on the top. I'm going to add one more color. So there's no separation by density, they're they mixed together? The density based on how thick I mix them and how I put them in the cup can keep them separate. And one of oh, the other okay. techniques I'm gonna do, I'll show you another way that I help keep them separate. Um, so I'm just gonna swipe twice through this like I was making a marble cake, <laughs> just so that they're mixed a little bit. And I'm gonna flip it like this onto the canvas. And then I need to let it sit for a minute so that the paint drains out of the cup. Because this has silicone in it, you can already see that those bubbles that I call cells are popping up. Most canvases that I use have corners. Getting the corners covered is the hard part sometimes. And now I'm going to use my heat gun with just a little heat to get air bubbles out. Oh, my electricity's not working. All right, I'm just going to tilt it. If there's air bubbles in there, there's air bubbles. Later on at the end, I'm going to set a piece of paper down so you can all see it. That's got a list of my favorite YouTube channels. There are more YouTube artists doing paint pouring than you would ever imagine. And now I'm gonna, I'm gonna tilt this down to the corner cause I want it to cover the corner. That's gonna drip off into my pan a little bit. And then you have to get the weight of the paint kind of back toward the center before you tip it in another direction. That light blue is being swallowed up by my purple and my green, but that's all right. A lot of times that's why I do test canvases to see if my colors are gonna work well together. The next one I do, I'm gonna use my favorite, my red, white, and blue combination that I really had good luck with. So that amount of paint is just about covering this. I'm gonna get a little bit more out of the cup here.
So if this didn't have the silicone in it, it wouldn't be making all these shapes and circles pop up. If I just bring the edge of that paint over the side a little bit, it, it goes there more quickly. So I'm not gonna keep fussing with this one, but that's what you do. You manipulate the paint and tilt it around. If you have any places on the composition of this that you didn't like, you try to pour them off. And I didn't realize at first, if I did something like this and I didn't like it, I thought I was stuck with it, but I've learned lots of ways to fix things that I don't like. I'm gonna set this aside and get the next one. Looks pretty cool. I have a place in this room that the cats can't get to, and that's why I put things to dry. <laughs> My studio cats aren't very well behaved sometimes. Would not be good to have kitty footprints walking through the middle of your painting. Although it might make an interesting composition, but it's getting the kind of the cat. Fur that's my issue. <laughs> yeah. My new kitty who's seven months old or so is white with long fur. She would be in a whole world of hurt if she got a lot of paint on her. All right, I'm gonna do a ring pour now. And the ring pour is my favorite. This is an eight by ten. I'm going to cover the sides. So I'm going to use probably about five. My screen is flashing on and off. Is that something on my end? I think so. It's Everything's looking good here. Okay, it stopped now. My computer screen was flashing on and off. So I'm going to put about five ounces in here. The cup, the paint that you put in the cup first is what's going to be in the middle. And the paints that I put in last are what's going to be on the outer edge. So sometimes I try to orchestrate what I want to be in the middle. And I have some nice bright white here that's going in the bottom. And I'm pouring these in down the side of the cup. And that's what helps keep them from mixing. It's going to help keep them separate. But I'm also going to put just a little bit of white between each of the colors. And that really helps keep them separate. This alizarin crimson is fabulous. I've got a lot of it. So I'm just going to alternately layer these three colors, the red, white, and the blue. And when I put them on the canvas, I'm going to do it in such a way that it leaves rings of color. Sometimes it's called a tree ring. Sometimes it's just called a ring pour. And then when I stretch it and tilt it and move it around, I'll have some control over the designs that I make and how it comes out. You can't ever duplicate. If I use exactly the same colors, if I layered two cups exactly the same next to each other and put them on a canvas, they'd come out a little different. Because the paint has a mind of its own sometimes. So I don't know if you can see, Mark, by doing this down the side, they're really not mixing, they're layering. And if I was in one of my clear cups, you could see that. You can actually see the layers up the side of the cup. I've recently bought some bigger canvases and I'm looking forward to doing some really big ones, but. How many ounces of paint are you using for an eight by 10? 
about four, but I put a little extra in. And there's no, so, um, there's no medium in there. This is all these paints are mixed with Floetrol and the GAC 800. I've got them all mixed ahead of time and I keep them in these containers so I can just go when I come. Oh, I see. So the medium peg keeps yep. the acrylics from not drying out. The Floetrol specifically helps make the paint flow better and eliminates brush marks. It's a paint conditioner. And that or the glue mixture lets the paints flow and move around on but, the but, canvas. But I'm when I'm right in the middle. But they but they keep the paint fresh in those containers? Yes, because they're got a tight top on them. I don't think they'd stay good for a year, but with this top on them, they stay fresh for a long time. The, the container itself keeps them from hardening. Yeah. So it's not so much the medium. Right. That helps. That helps. All right, I'm going to start pouring this into my little puddle of white paint here. And sometimes with the ring pour, I do this little bit of swirling motion that I'm doing. Because you'll see it makes nice little fingers of color that are pretty. And that white that I put in first should be showing up here at the end. <clears throat> And the blue that I'm using is a pearl sapphire. So it's got a pearl medium in it. If I've got a paint that I want to have pearl, I can add some of this Sargent's pearlescent mixing medium. You can add this to it and it will give the paint that pearlescent color. Have some of that pearlescent. You got it at um and then oh. to get this to flow on the canvas and not get stuck, if I just tilted this and moved it around now, this outer layer would get rolled under and the paint would spread out. And I don't want it to roll under. I want to keep all that. So I'm going to give it what's called some flow extender, which is just some thinned paint and medium. <coughs> and it's going to help it flow across the canvas. It's going to get tilted off into my tray here. <coughs> I have some round canvases I'm anxious to try. These Getting these corners covered with paint can be a challenge. And once I've got the color to go over the side like that, now when I tilt it, that will keep it there. If I just go back and forth, it's not really going to stay spread out. So now I've gone up that other corner. Now I'm going to tilt the weight of the paint back onto the canvas. I'm going to tip it down to these other corners. So can you see the pretty design in the middle? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That white and blue that I put in at the bottom has these pretty fingers of red. And Looks great. And I've got that pearl medium in the red paint, so it's got some nice glisten to it. Try to tilt this so it's covering all the sides. This corner didn't get very covered very well. but So I move it around like that. If there's any part of it that I don't like, I can tip it off and pour it off. Bring that back in. That's and if there was cool. a lot of this that I didn't like, I could pour more paint on top of it or I can scrape it off and just start over. But I try not to scrape it off. I think I've only ever scraped it off once or twice. I wish my heat gun was working. Something, I think I fried my 
power strip that I've got hanging here. But oops. We think it looks like a shark. <laughs> and it's fascinating the things that you see in these. I've got some that look like a sunset, so I actually can embellish them when they dry. If I think it's not interesting enough on itself, this one's got the silhouette of a shark, as a great big whale. I mean, as if I was looking for them above. That's really cool. And then this one was kind of a boring blue and silver and green sky. Oh, so wow. I added some planets. Yeah. Cool. I drew a circle and used some fairly thick paint with a brush and put it on so that it stayed within the circle that I drew. Oh. And I added a lot of little stars. So it looks like a galaxy. Very That's cool. Right. Thank you. This is one that's not finished, but I'm learning how to do these great big bubbles. <laughs> and I did this. This is one that um, it's called the Dutch pour. You have stripes of color, and you use the blow dryer, and you blow it around in the white paint, and it makes these pretty it's, designs. Yeah, it almost looks like. I really like that one. Yeah, it looks like a, an iris or some floral. Yeah, mm -hmm. without the bubbles even. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you make the bubbles smaller, like drops of dew. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. All right, I'm going to do one more. This one looks more. like a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I got to put this up high. Yeah. Gail, I think I'm tripping out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wouldn't be um, too unusual, would it, Mark? Not I know, but I've never though. made anyone trip out. <laughs> <laughs> Art okay. in general makes me trip out. Yeah, that's okay. Tripping is good. <laughs> trip the light, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> trip the light, fantastic. I'm going to do one more ring pour, but then I'm going to wreck it, which doesn't mean the same thing as wrecking usually means. This is one of your many tools. This is a frosting spreading tool that I'm going to use after I get the rings of color on here. I'm going to use that to change the shapes. So you could use an old comb, right? Yeah, a comb. Um, if I'm covering a surface with paint, I use these putting spreading knives. Um, there's a lot of different, some people just use their hands. I have some palette knives, plastic ones mostly, that I use with this that I can spread things around with. I wonder if plastic fork kind of drag it through. Mm -hmm. what that would look like. A lot of people that do paint pouring let their paint dry and whatever they've got, it, if it's on a sheet of plastic or in these trays. And they peel them up and use them to make jewelry. They're called paint skins. Yeah, oh, so, yeah. A lot of people use them to make jewelry. And wow. Madison and I saved a lot of paint skins in a shoe box, but we never did anything with them. They're still sitting waiting. When Madison was here in the spring, the first 12 weeks of the pandemic, my 11 year old granddaughter stayed with us. Right. And to recover from remote learning every day, we would do paint pouring mm. Mm. or any other kind of art that was messy that she loved to do. She was actually pretty good at it. I bet. All three, all three of my granddaughters have done this with me. All right, I've got a cup layered. I'm gonna put, I've got a little bronze metallic paint in here. So I'm gonna, Pour this, but just let it sit in the middle. I'm not going to spread it yet. Sometimes these metallic paints completely sink down into the design and you lose them, but sometimes they just give it a nice glimmer underneath them.
pretty little swirl in the middle. And then if you don't want the drips to wreck your design, you put your finger on the cup when you take it away. Now, even though this table's level, this is tilting like it wasn't. I'm gonna use my tool and change the shape of the rings. And then I'm going to tilt it and spread it. I'm going to help myself out here and bring some toward the corner. Put a little bit of white on here so that I don't lose all these pretty stripes. A lot of times with the flow trial as the pouring medium, you can get a lot of those pretty cells that people like. Um, if I get some, I'm happy with it, but I don't put the silicone in. Part of the problem with using the silicone is that if you want to varnish your painting, you have to work really hard to get all the oil off of it. So even though this is a ring pour, by using that tool and combing through it, I've changed it quite a bit. It's got lots of swirls and quite different shapes than it would if I just so tilted it. Oh, very cool. Some of us think that 2020 hasn't left yet. I have to go buy a new iPhone tomorrow. Our furnace has been repaired once already this week. Oh no. And I'm not sure it's fixed. And I can't remember the other 2020 kind of things that are going on, but <laughs> we had no we had no hot water for the first week. Oh, I know we lost our power for half an hour yesterday morning. Yeah, it's 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 been strange times, I'll tell you. You said very grateful that I have lots of art supplies. They will deliver me more anytime I want to buy more. <coughs> oh, that's and neat. I spend a lot of time maintaining my mental health by doing art. Nice. So you can see that gives quite a different look than the yeah. ring if I had just spread it yes. out. Summer. And if my heat was working, I would start to get some of these. You can see there's a few little dots showing up, but I would get more of that if I plug with my hair dryer was cool. I mean, my heat gun was working. A good way to tell too, if I've really got too much paint still on top of this for it to not dry well, is if when I go to tilt it, it really moves and flows like crazy. When it gets so that it's barely moving, then I know I've tilted enough paint off. Go down and get this other corner here. What paints um, do you favor, Peg? I like the Liquitex Basics from Michaels and the Arteza paints. And that's from Michaels too? Uh, no, I order those online. Arteza has their own website. You can buy them on Amazon. It's cheaper to buy them from the Arteza website. And a lot of the YouTube artists that I'm going to share with you are ambassadors for these different companies. So if you use their link and go to their website, you get a 10% discount. And after that dries, can you uh, pour a second layer or third layer on it? You can. You can, if you don't like it, you can cover it completely. 
Or if there's a section that you want to enhance or fix or change, you can pour on top of it. Or you can just do embellishments with acrylic paint markers mm -hmm. or even acrylic paints with a paintbrush. Um, there's a lot of different embellishments that people have done to them. And, and you use, you use the transparent, uh, transparent pigments uh, to pour over so you get a translucent effect? You can. Most of the paints that I use are at least partially opaque. Um, I'm going to try to tilt my computer screen for a second and show you all the paints that I have on my rack behind me. Let's see. Can you see that rack down there with all the paints on it? That's my supply of Arteza paints. <laughs> You have okay. to unpin the other video. Well, that's too much complication at the moment to do that. <laughs> uh, what else did I want to tell you guys about? Drying <laughs> the paintings can take anywhere from 24 hours to three days, depending on how thick they are and how humid it is. Um, because I have mine up high, where it's warm, mine usually dry in about 48 hours. But before you varnish them, you have to let them cure. And that, there's di all different opinions about if that's a week or if it's three weeks or a month. Um, hmm. So, for instance, I'm going to show you the paint pour that I did on an old window. <laughs> And because it's got a lot of paint, I've been letting this oh. sit for a couple of weeks before I seal it. I haven't ventured into the world of using resin, but I'm going to try it one of these days. Um, this is a great big pour that I did on an old window. That's beautiful. Yeah. And I am going to seal it. I'm going to turn it over so you can see the back's got a view of what the bottom of the paint looked like oh, in that glass. Yeah. I think really cool that too. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Wow. Well, I wonder what it looked like if you held it up to, to a window and let the sun shine through. <laughs> yeah. Dick, that's a great idea. Away. Now I'm just going to bring up a few more of my paintings to show you. This was a ring pour that I did with two different color combinations. Oh, I like that. Wow. She's amazing. This was a ring pour, one of my favorites. I loved how this one came out. And this has metallic silver in it. Yeah. And the silver didn't stay completely separate and distinct, but it gave the whole thing kind of a metallic glimmer. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. That is cool. This is the one that I included in the post on Facebook, um, Al. Yes, I saw that. This has metallic bronze, and I haven't varnished this one yet. But I put the date on the back. The other thing I do to prepare the canvas is I put painter's tape around the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then when it's dry, I can peel that off, and the back side of my canvas looks nice. Ah. And these are the medium sized push pins that I have. Some of the Great big canvases I'm going to use. I have some huge push pins that I'm going to use. Um, but it's good so that when they're drying, if they were sitting in a puddle of paint when they were drying, when you went to pick it up, it would be stuck and there'd be all this mess yeah. attached to so it. Uh, if you put it on wax paper, it probably wouldn't happen. Yeah, there are some um, things that you can do, but having it either on... But the push pins are a good a idea. Cookie sheet, a cookie, you know, cooling rack, a baking cooling rack or something. Yeah. You could do that as well. Right, right. If you guys
guys remember a couple of years ago, we had a free art demo by Golden Paints. A representative yes. from the company came. Yes. Most of the colors on this canvas were done with the paints that they gave us that day. <laughs> oh, cool. Because I had never used them for anything else. Yeah. Do you think they'll come back again? <laughs> can try. To, I can always ask them. When well, they came up with nice samples. <laughs> Well, golden paints are the top of the line. They are, and I usually don't splurge and use them. I have bought a few, but I'm enjoying using those free samples that we got. Yeah. Um, well, li liquid chess texts are uh, pretty popular, especially in schools. Uh -huh. you know, it, fits their, it fits the budget. Yeah. Some of the varnishes that I use brush on with a foam brush. But I haven't had as good luck with having them be smooth. I usually like the spray ones. I do much better with the spray ones. Warm. Okay. These are the YouTube artists that I really like. They are. And I can rotate it 90 degrees. This one? Yes. Okay. I can send that to you. I can type it and send it to you if anybody wants them. But there are a million of them. This um, gentleman at the bottom whose channel is called Left Brain Artist is an engineer with a very scientific mind, but he likes to do paint pouring to use the other side of his brain. And he does all sorts of comparisons of different products. He does very educational, experimental things and teaches a lot. He's fascinating to watch. Um, so there's some hope for me since I'm an engineer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're using the other side of your brain to do your photography. That's right. Um, that, would side. Yeah. Mark. No, that would fit for you, Mark. Yeah. You should yeah, try it. I get it. This artist at the top of the list, Gina DeLuca, has a <coughs> Facebook art group that's called Go we'll Make Some Art with Gina DeLuca. And it's not all just paint pouring artists, but it's mostly paint pouring artists. And there's an amazing helpfulness in those communities of people that if you have a question about something, they will answer you and give you all sorts of, you know, feedback about your painting or help about products or also, I've really gotten a lot of information from them. Does anybody else have any questions before we go? Uh, so, um, two things, Peg, real fast. Yep. The silicone, can you get that in a hardware store? Probably. And if you... I'm trying to think of which one of these artists would have the best ideas. Um, maybe I'll include that information. The book that I have has a list of the other things. This is the book um, that I got a while ago that is a great you, reference. Was that from Michael's? The book? I ordered it online, but it's available in, in craft stores. I, I think you can probably get this in Michael's. Um, it's called Pain Pouring. Rick Cheadle. Mastering Fluid Art and Rick Cheadle is the author and i'll go in here and find the other products that you can some of the products are hair products that you can use i don't use any of them so it's not stuff that i'm familiar with but there are other ways to get your paint to do that other than just having silicone mm -hmm. well i i am i on yes Mm -hmm. So, Peg, I think this was really great. You know, when I moved from Maine back to Franklin, uh -huh. I I joined the Franklin Art Association, and there was six of us, six six people trying to trying to resurrect, um, including Pam's mom, Joan, uh -huh. and um, so. We couldn't afford to bring in demonstrations, and so we had each other demonstrate every month for free. Yeah. Yeah. 
So this night really brings me back like 20 years ago, mm -hmm. unbelievable, um, to when a member would demonstrate and, and really uh, pull off a, a great um, meeting, which you have just done. Thank you, Peg. So thank it's been you. Great. You're very so welcome. Thank you. I love doing much. this. And I thank love you, telling people about it. It was hard to squeeze it all. I could go on for another two hours, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can no. do really, really good.